course uh, lemma. This is technical statement, but it is important and it is uh, easy to understand if you have function of two variables. So it's due to Marston Morse. lemma and I will do it only for functions of two variables because for functions of two variables you will see you don't need any special tools in order to understand this lemma what is this lemma about you take function of two variables and let's assume that gradient of this function is equal to zero at uh, the origin and uh, then uh, I assume also that th you can differentiate this function as many times as you need as many times as you need and then I can find the change of variables such that so the change of variables I can replace u with uh, u is function of x and y and v is function of x and y I can do this change of variable variables and uh, my function f of u and v becomes the sum of squares squares of course it works only for generic functions generic in which sense I will explain in a moment and this change of variables it's uh, one to one near the origin <coughs> and actually u is looks like x and v lo looks like y as long as as long as x y is close to zero and let's construct those functions this is Morse change of variables and the existence of this uh, change is uh, normally known under the name Morse lemma. So now let me uh, look at the example. The best way to explain what's going on is to look at at example. Let's take this function. So it has some. Uh, uh, it's important to have both squares here. So it both x squared and y squared should be present. And x and y can be eliminated by the rotation of the frame of coordinates. If you don't know that, please, uh, you can find it in my short lectures on second order curves or in the textbooks. With the change, with the rotation of the frame, you can get rid of x times y. So let's look at this function. There is quadratic part of this function, gradient of this function at the origin will be zero it's critical point the origin and there is some garbage here and this garbage here I will write it garbage high order garbage uh, it has higher order in the sense that it has some kind of say 5 x cube it has mixed products like 4 x squared y plus say uh, y squared x plus something I don't know just whatever you like as long as it as the cumulative power here larger than two <coughs> uh, say mm, 10 I don't know y to the four whatever this is higher order garbage like this one this is quadratic part then let me construct the Morse change of variables that will make this function look like the sum of squares like that again generic I mean generic this works for the generic generic f of x y generic means you have both lambdas both squares are present that means generic because if at least one of the squares disappeared uh, it's not gonna work Generic means you hear a quadratic part here has both x squared and y squared here. 
Now let me construct the change of variables. So it's still my function f of x, y. I factor out 2x squared. And this x squared will take care of all the terms in the garbage that have x squared inside. So instead of 2x squared, I will have 1 here. Now I have x squared here. It's 5x cubed. So inside I have x squared. I have 5 over 2 times ax. Then I have x squared in this term. It will become 2y. When I multiply through, I'll get 4x squared. When I multiply through, I'll get 5x cubed. No x squared. So that's I'm done with all the terms from, from the garbage where I have x squared. Now, now I will take care of the rest of the garbage. So I take 3y squared minus 3y minus three squared, factor it out. Instead of minus one th minus three y squared, I'll have one, and now I will take care of all the terms from this high order garbage where I have y squared inside. I will have minus uh, x over three. So when when I multiply through, I'll get y squared x, and I'll have minus ten over three y. And I just have rewritten this function in this form. I didn't do anything else. Now I will define, finally, I will create this Morse change of variables. I call this one u squared, and I will call that one. So let me just put this parenthesis uh, outside so that it won't look awkward. I put it here. And I'll create this one v squared. Then after this change of variables, my function becomes 2u squared and minus 3v squared. And let's look at the change of variables. u squared is this part. And uh, v squared is this part, right? And now I can, I, I need to take square root left and right here. <coughs> and I'll have more change of variables. U is x times square root of whatever I have here. And V is y times square root, whatever I have here. And this is my Morse change of variables. After this change, the function becomes the sum of squares. It's not ne necessarily the small neighborhood. I mean, so in order to do all this stuff, I just need to make sure that squares, square roots exist. And then the whole uh, change of variable works just fine. And my function becomes the sum of squares. That's the idea behind the Morse change of variables. Also, when x and y are getting close to the origin, those square roots becomes ones, and uh, your u is almost looks like u looks like x. It's almost identical change. That means v u and v they look like x y. <coughs> also, if you just write partial derivative, if you write uh, uh, derivative for u and v for this change of variable, you will see it will be close, it will be uh, uh, at the origin, it will be uh, uh, identity matrix, one on the diagonal, zero otherwise. And now we have the more change of variables. Now you can see how it works in general. If you take a function of x and y, and let's assume that uh, f uh, gradient at uh, 0 is 0. It means you can write this function f at 0, 0. Gradient is 0. And then you, you have quadratic, quadratic uh, part, quadratic term for your function. So it's the second derivative with respect to x at 0 times x squared plus twice uh, 
<coughs> the second derivative uh, with respect to x y right x times y this one is uh, divided by one half the whole thing right <coughs> plus the second derivative with respect to y at zero zero this one is also at zero zero times y squared this is one half according to Taylor expansion <coughs> and uh, plus again garbage I will write garbage you know what it is already it's high order terms where you have x cube x squared times y y squared times x y and so on and so on it's high order garbage and then you can do a, a rotation of x and y by rotating x of x and y you can get rid of x times y now like uh, similar to what we did with second order curves we rotate x and y and we will get new variables x bar y bar and here we will have the sum of squares lambda one x bar squared lambda two y bar squared and plus <coughs> this garbage stuff of high order and then you you do exactly as i did before i mean instead of in order to be precise with this garbage stuff this garbage will look anyway like this x x bar squared times some g1 of x bar y bar and uh, uh, y bar squared times some sort of g2 x bar y bar and those g1 at 0 0 is 0 and g2 at 0 0 is 0 and then you you do exactly as I did before this is your gar this is my garbage this is my garbage right here and then I do exactly as I did before. I can write my function as uh, this part. Then I take care of x bar variable exactly as I did before. And I take care of uh, y bar variable exactly as I did before. And then I set up the change of coordinates u to Morse, u to Mars and Morse. So this will be my u squared. This is my v squared. And here we are. But I can do it only in the situation where lambda one is not equal to zero and lambda two is not equal to zero. This is generic situation. Otherwise, this trick doesn't work. And now you know Morse change of variables, you know Morse lemma, any function can be written as sum of squares, sum of squares, as long as it is a generic functions, both uh, lambdas are not zeros here. And uh, now you can do the quiz I post on Morse change of variable, variables. Thank you for watching.